Vanessa, to child trafficking? Yeah, I mean, I, I wrote that uh, this article this week. It's up at my Substack, Western Rampant Hypocrisy, as they condemn children in northeast Syria to a life of abuse. And below that, there's um, a screenshot from a Save the Children report. There are multiple human rights organizations' reports on the effect of abuse and torture that these children are living under, and many of them are British nationals. I would say way more than 60, but also EU nationals, US nationals. Um, and just to give you an idea of where these camps generally are in that northeastern area, which is under the occupation of the United States, which is also, of course, stealing oil and resources, and uh, the Kurdish separatists. So those ISIS camps, which, by the way, are currently being expanded through funding from the UK and the US. So the UK is actively involved not only in not repatriating these children, but in expanding basically the torture centers that they're being forced to live in. So let's have a quick look. So Neil Holland uh, was appointed head of the United Kingdom's delegation to the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, the OSCE, in May of this year. In June, Holland made a statement um, to the OCSE that Russia's brutality towards Ukraine's children, uh, in which he said, Mr. Chair, we also continue to receive disturbing reports of the forced deportation of Ukrainian children by the Russian authorities. As the most recent Moscow Mechanism report makes clear, these children are exposed to the deep trauma of being separated from their parents. They suffer violations and abuses of their rights, including being forced to relinquish their Ukrainian identity and participate in Russia-centric education. Russia's forced deportation and attempted indoctrination of Ukrainian children is a despicable and systematic attempt to erase Ukraine's future. Now let's have a quick look at some of the refugee centers and areas that I visited back in November 2022 when the referendum was ongoing for those so-called Ukrainian territories to be reunified with Russia. Um, many of these families were from Mariupol. They are basically being taken care of in eastern Russia until Russia has rebuilt the areas of Mariupol that they fled from that were flattened by um, the Kiev regime forces. So you can see here the building itself is beautiful. The surroundings are beautiful. The kids are well taken care of. They received trauma counseling. They have three meals a day. Um, yes, they are um, basically absorbed into the Russian education system, but um, with the vision of allowing them to go back to um, the Donbass uh, when the war is ended. So totally very, very different picture to what is being presented by Holland. And then let's have a look at what's happening in the Northeast. So the majority of the children that are being um, held in these camps are foreign nationals. Um, as it says, as of January the 23rd, 2023, nearly 42,000 foreigners remain held in the region, along with more than 23,000 Syrians. 37,000 foreign nationals are detained in Al Hol and Roj two locked, sprawling camps, primarily holding the wives, other adult female relatives and children of mild, sorry, male ISIS suspects. 27,000 foreigners in the camps are from neighboring Iraq, while nearly 10,000 others are from about 60 other countries, including, of course, the UK. More than 60% of the camp detainees are children. Nearly 80% of the children are under the age of 12, and 30% are age five or younger. Approximately 5,000 other foreigners are held in prisons and so-called rehabilitation centers, including up to several, several hundred children. Now, the conditions that these children are being held in, they are prey to child trafficking, to child rape, to uh, general exploitation and abuse by the terrorists that they share the camps with. Children are regularly taken from their parents, and the parents are not informed as to which camp they are being held in, and many of them simply disappear. Remember, many of these are British nationals. So this is what the British government uh, thinks of its own nationals being held in, in northeast Syria. This is one of the human rights groups' uh, conclusions in their report. The unlawful detention in northeast Syria of 23,000 foreign children from dozens of countries has deprived them of their basic rights as children, including the rights to a nationality, health, 
education, family unity, and freedom from mistreatment and arbitrary detention. Those who have died because of the conditions or circumstances of their detention have been denied the right to life itself. And let's have a look at um, what uh, former Ambassador Peter Ford said to me about this situation in relation to the accusations uh, that the UK and other NATO member states are uh, levying at Russia and via the ICC, of course. The UK, so apparently solicitors regarding the children of Ukraine, appears less concerned about some of its own, to the extent, in fact, of denying them not just a right of abode in the UK, but even a right to UK nationality. The most well-known case is that of Shamima Begum. Remember that she was trafficked, aged 15, by Canadian intelligence with the full knowledge of MI6 and intelligence agencies in the UK. She was an East London teenager encouraged by British government propaganda demonizing Assad to join ISIS and subsequently stripped of her nationality and forced to fester for years in the extremism incubators, which are the ISIS prisoner camps in the US-UK controlled northern Syria. The sins of mothers being visited on the children. Begum's children are consequently also denied their birthright and a chance to live in Britain. For a government which behaves this despicably towards children of its own nation, to posture as a children's champion is a sickening hypocrisy, and I can't agree more. In the article, there is a lot more detail about the awful, squalid uh, conditions that these children are living in and are being denied um, repatriation, bearing in mind that Sajid Javed in 2019 offered amnesty to British al-Qaeda fighters in northwest Syria. He gave them 28 days to return to Syria. Complete hypocrisy. Uh, and then, yeah. yeah, did you want to comment? I, I'm just going to say, the moment we talk about this subject, I, re I remember, I think it was the 400 uh, mm. unaccompanied Syrian children that came to the UK, and the government calmly said, well, they've disappeared. Well, we're just going to come on to that. We're going to come on to so, that. So <laughs> let's, just, let's just do that. So yeah. uh, the saga does continue because, of course, it's also children being trafficked into the UK, not British children into the UK, of course, uh, but unaccompanied children. Uh, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because uh, in 2022, the Independent Chief Inspector of Borders and Immigration released this report, uh, uh, an inspection of the use of hotels for housing unaccompanied asylum-seeking children. Um, and the government has now uh, decided, or they, uh, the Independent Chief Inspector has now decided to reappraise these hotels. And this is why. So they've just uh, announced that they're going to do that. So this is why, because this was the conclusions in this report. They said that with immediate effect, the hotels had to prevent individuals without a clear enhanced disclosure and barring service check from residing and working within the hotels currently being used to house young people and for any ho hotels used by the Home Office in the future. So no DBS check for people that were working in the hotels with these children. It could have been anybody. Uh, within one month, he said, uh, using external expertise if required, undertake a robust assessment of the collective needs of the young people housed in hotels with due regard to Section 55 of the Border Citizen Citizenship and Immigration Act 2009 uh, to inform the development of standards, uh, uh, feedback and data from children and young people housed in hotels, contractors, management information collected by the operation and so on, and also the activities of external agencies, including NGOs. Uh, that within three months they had to develop a challenge and scrut scrutiny mechanism drawing on internal and external expertise and the resources to monitor delivery of the operation with a specific focus on safeguarding children's welfare. So he obviously had concerns about children safeguarding in these establishments. And as I say, they've now decided that they are going to reevaluate the hotels. Um, but to come to, to the point that Brian was bringing up there, I just remind everybody again of this report. Uh, that we've mentioned many times before from the uh, NGO Missing People called Heading Back to Harm, in which they said the trafficked uh, unaccompanied asylum-seeking children are going missing from UK care at an alarmingly high rate. Um, and the point is, uh, if I remember rightly, this report came out in 2016, 2017, but this actually was understood by the UK government uh, through the all-party parliamentary group for runaway and missing children and adults and the uh, uh, all-party parliamentary group for looked after children and care leavers. This was a report from 2012. So the trafficking of children, as I described it, for fun and profit, was understood uh, in 2012 
via this report. This was called the report from the joint inquiry into children who go missing from care. It, it has been a, a, an issue which has been ongoing for quite a long time in this country. So we are trafficking children uh, in other countries, but we're also trafficking children into this country where they're disappearing from the care system into goodness, goodness knows what, uh, various sexual slavery or other kinds of modern, so-called modern slavery. And, and the, the system works so effectively because the, the moment the children come into the so-called protection system, uh, they can simply move on and parents or guardians have no right to know what has happened with the children. So as a, uh, I'm not using this in a disparaging way, but as a sweetie shop, the system is here. And uh, it is despicable to see this and to discover that FTAC is now working uh, against parents keeping their children is, is to me just beyond belief. Yes. Uh, Vanessa, you got a brief comment to end? No, I mean, you know, I, do, I just find that w when the West and Ukraine, of course, are basically the hubs of child trafficking, um, organ trafficking, child abduction, then to be levying the accusations they are against Russia with very little sub substantiation. It's pure projection. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Okay, if you like what the UK Column does, you'd like to support us, please head over to community.ukcolumn.org. You can join us as a member and your membership very much needed and appreciated. Uh, or you could pick something up at the UK Column shop. That's at shop.ukcolumn.org. Uh, but in any case, please do share anything that you find on the various platforms, especially ukcolumn.org and ukcolumnextracts.co.uk. Um, so uh, I just want to mention uh, an inter a discussion that uh, you and I had, Vanessa, with a couple of special ladies, uh, aside from yourself, of course. Uh, just give us, <laughs> give us your thoughts on this interview, Media on Trial. Well, I mean, I, I, I really enjoyed having the conversation, so thank you very much for organizing it. I mean, yes, they are two of my best friends and longest-term colleagues, really, in the work that I do. Um, and it was, I think, a very open, um, kind of far-ranging discussion. I hope everyone enjoys it. Yes, thank you. And uh, Brian, that brings us on to the Leon Cryer, third Leon Cryer interview that went out yesterday. Yes, we've had a really good response uh, to this gentleman and his uh, knowledge about urban planning and architecture, really uh, tremendous. But in this uh, third interview, we're looking at the super city in Saudi, Neon. And if uh, if people haven't got an idea of what's being planned for us, uh, listen in to or watch this interview and see what's coming in the mind of some of the urban planners. OK, and uh, we just bring this one in. We've got uh, a free event in Surrey, Sunday, the 10th of September, Priory Park, Rygate. Uh, Richard Vobes is going to be there, Robin Tilbrook, um, Nigel Jacqueline from the Democrat Network, uh, Debbie Hicks, uh, Kate Winters from the People's Health Alliance uh, and Piers Corbyn. Uh, so they're going to be doing a stand in the park with obviously some really good speakers. So if you can get there and support that, that will be good. 